Well, I suppose this was always going to happen, it wasn't at some point. This was all, like we were always going to get a big old comeuppance. And I've seen that game uh, 85 times before. Now we get to watch highlights of that for the rest of our lives. Oh, Henley, driven 19, then 23, and they just, they just keep doing it. Ah! You know, fair enough. Just, I'm, I'm, just not, I'm looking at nice guys scoring nice runs with nice eyes. Chris Wokes, Mark Wood comes in, Harry Brook, you know, all the names that you know who play for England and score nice, neat, clean runs. That's all good, but I'm in pain and I'm going to pretend like I don't care about the sport right now, okay, for a bit, and that's my prerogative. You are watching TGC brought to you by Budgie Smuggler, budgiesmuggler.com. Use the code Good Areas for free shipping. Uh, Pezza, what kind of pain are you in at the moment? Uh, I don't know, mate. I'm, I'm in spoilt pain. You know, like before the series started, you and I were like, well, England probably win the series because that's what England do in the ashes right. of cricket that it's played between England and Australia. And now Australia Three countries, yeah. And now Australia won a couple of close games and I'm greedy. I'm like, ah, you know, Australia could have won the ashes in 14 days today, you know, and, and, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm not happy. Which is my right as an Australian, you know. Now we, now Australia gets to go through. I think the next test is uh, in a week, like like nine days or something. So we get to have you mm. know nine days of navel gazing, nine days of nonces talking about how the batting order should be reshaped to something like fantasy football or some shit like that, because that's how we do it in Australia. But you just yeah. have to, you have to say England was England was just ahead at the right times in this game. They are full value for the victory. There is some uh, mathematical and spiritual symbiosis and fairness to the fact that we've won some t- two close ones that they could have won, and then they've won a close one that maybe we could have won or some shit. So all good, 2-1, you know, everyone's happy on the playground. Now we go back to school uh, and, mm-hmm. and, sh- and, sh- and shit like that. Uh, like even even when England tried to lose the game today with you know the obligatory daft shit that they do when they get ahead, right. they were always just ahead. They were just there was there was too too many batters, too many guys who had too many good moments in them. Uh, you know, like Mark Woods now England's number three. He'll never get out. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and you just have to say, yeah, like Harry Brook, um, Harry Brook, head and shoulders above everybody today. You know, you, like England better value for the victory as well. Like. You can complain about conditions and whatnot, but like they, they literally got the ball moving, you know, yesterday. They 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 got it hooping. They made it do some shit. Uh, mm. Yeah, there was some sun today, but like Australia couldn't get it to move off the straight. I mean, Mitch Marsh might have swung a couple like out of the hands, but uh, the skill was better from the England bowlers and they held their nerve with the batting. So uh, fair play. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um, Pez, I don't know if anyone's brought this up, but this reminds me a fair bit of 2005, this series, like with heaps of close games yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. just the hype around it and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I, I fucking hate 2005, okay? I fucking hate 2019. I hate 2005. I hate fucking Andrew Strauss. I hate seeing Triscothic. I hate seeing Hoggard, Jones, Harmison, all those fucking coats because they win, okay? I don't, I don't like 2005. There's nothing good about Test Cricket in it. 2005. I don't, well, I've ne- I don't think there actually was a series, but um, I'm getting. I'm, I think there was one in the 06, 07, though. Mm. Um, uh, you know, like uh, th- this. This is a great advertisement for the game of Test cricket, and people will be tuning around the world and think, you know what, this is this is where the real stuff is. Now, approximately 15 minutes after the last ball is bowled in the fifth Test match, we'll just go back to our uh, you know wheelie bin fucking circus carnivale that is T20 cricket. And hey, look, it's good gear sometimes. Don't get me wrong, but like. Um, any notion that you know this is uh, the, t- the test cricket is live and well? Fuck test cricket. Bring on the T twenties. Is my point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, the, like the the truth the truth is, is, is this is amazing and way more immersive than any other cricket that's, yeah. that's available. Yeah. Uh, and right now, it feels like we're just all living like, in this cosseted, beautiful world. We're suckling at the teat of test cricket. All of us, Australia and England, hands joined as twins, suckling at a a big full right. breast, a, a full bosom, you know, that just needs to be l- latched onto the and the lactate suckles down mm. the throat, you know. And then I'm and taking. I'm, is he taking? Is he, <laughs> is he latching? Do we need a? Uh, yeah, okay. And anyway, um, and that's where we are at the moment. And 
and it feels like that's what it will be forever. And people are like, this is a great advertisement for Test Cricket. That 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 ad ain't even running at midnight. You know what I mean? Like that, that, that ad ain't, ain't even on the in, infomercials. Uh, yeah, let's just run down the entire format having lost this game by three wickets. Like... Uh, um, you know, like once we're out, once we're, once we're you know past um, you know in- infancy and suckling on this full breast of Test cricket milk, we're just going to be going back to the cement owner shit, and um, and that's all good. You know, like that that that's fine. And uh, I just think don't even get close to this series. Don't even um, feel anything because it's just going to hurt you. I I I feel there's pain ahead. Yeah, there's much less pain in T20 cricket because you can just like cause the next game starts whilst the whilst the game in front of you is pain. Mm, look, look at the so, players. Um, the players walk off laughing usually. They're like, "Oh, I failed. Okay, well, I've got, <laughs> I've got to go through them to get to get me runs later." <laughs> that's right. That's right. I, I just got to trust the process. Um, let's talk about uh, Harry Brook Pezza, yeah. who hits. Uh, let me get the scorecard in front of me. Eyes here, seventy five off ninety three with nine fours. Um, just like uh, when he joined, Wo- sorry, when Wokes came in, they needed like, I think it was 80. Uh, and he and Brooke were so calm. But mm-hmm. like, uh, I mean, he has had an outstanding uh, start to his test career. Obviously, Harry Brooke, everyone knows that. But um, he was batting on like on a different deck. Um, but he, he was he was calm beyond his years today. Like, uh, just, just, just again, like I just seen in England where like these guys are just fucking amazing. And like I, I, I've never seen him get out before. I don't know. Don't think yeah. he actually has any weaknesses. Now I think about it. Um, but uh, tell you what, mate, it was uh, for for a young guy who's I know he's played. What he must have played ten ish tests now. Um, pretty fucking impressive. Pretty impressive to yeah, to have a run chase like that in Ashes. Yeah, man. Uh, and also evidence that he's like working it out a little bit as well. He he was kind of skittish in his first couple of games. You could see how electric he can be with the bat mm. no doubt about it I and mean, i think the stat today was that he's the fewest balls to a thousand runs so just he, he gets them at, an, at a clip uh, no problem but today i felt like even with men on the boundary stationed on the boundary playing to his ego asking him to clear them he didn't to my memory take any of them on like all he did was uh actually bat with maturity and just annihilate trash you know which he was served up a little bit uh or he was mm. he was he was served enough trash to capitalize on and if guys were offline or off length he was he would just go bang down the ground or square cut them uh or square drive them and he was good to go so yeah he he didn't look like getting out until he realized that it was his turn to do the dumb thing and just sort of yeah pop one up the shoot there uh and uh but but yeah he he'd or he'd done enough by then and yeah, he's a, he's a Yorkshireman who, who got it done at home, and uh, it, I, I think it's you know you 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 got to give him credit. I mean, we won't do that in in the press. It'll be Cummins' tactics, and you know whether you know take take your pick. Did he um, not bowl Murphy enough? Did he go? Um, did he not go short? Did he not you know go upstairs early enough? Uh, did he not bring Stark on soon enough for that final spell? Whatever, whatever you know is 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 it a problem that he flies jumbo jets like that? that we got that ahead for the next nine mm. days, and that they are the spoils of uh, defeat that that you can um yeah. you can get into. But you know, it's funny how like you the the other team doesn't win, you just lose the game. But I just think here, like you just got to say Harry Brook uh, was was the star of today, and then he was ably supported by Chris Wokes, who was just like a sensible man, and um yep, and it turns out if you just add a little bit of sensible shit to to basketball, like it's even harder to uh, to defeat. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, at, at what point did you? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm jumping jumping that's the gun right. there. Like, did you did you think that um, Australia was going to win it at a certain point, or were you always a bit? I, I was I was always a bit like, nah, nah. nah. I, I, th- I think England is slightly ahead all the way. And, you know, I, I don't think I was being pessimistic either. Like, even when they were six for, mm. fuck, what was it, six for Needing 80. Um, 170. Mm. Yeah, yeah. A- even then, I was like, nah. I can just see Wokes and Wood and and Robertson and Broad just chipping in mm. and like. Somehow, like they start batting more sensibly, then it just looks hard to get out because they're not going to play ridiculous shots. I mean, Harry Brook ends up playing an absurd shot in the end, like a forehand. But like, ah, uh, Chris Wokes, he's he's just he works nine to five at his accounting firm. He's got mm. two and a half kids. He drives a sedan. He's going to look after you. It's safe hands. It's a very nice haircut. I, I bet he's a great bloke. Mate, 100%. Um, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be surprising if Chris Wokes if Chris Wokes was a shocking bloke? That would be really surprising. Oh, I'd be I'd be, <laughs> I'd be floored. 
I mean, yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> he's paying his taxes on time. Okay, he's involved in yeah. one rort, but you've got to be involved in a rort to pay the, um, ah. you know, to, tr- to try and pay your mortgage in, uh, in the, some of the leafy parts of Birmingham. So uh, every, every, everybody's doing that. <laughs> but yeah, he was, yeah, Brooke and Wokes were like the the ultimate <laughs> nexus, you know, the ultimate alchemy for, for basketball, mm. particularly on that deck as well. Australia, again, couldn't couldn't get the ball to move, couldn't get it to talk, really. Uh, we'll, we'll come mm. to Stark, sorry, who was outstanding uh, early on and, and yeah. kept Australia in it. But um, yeah, it was, it was uh, England good value for it. Um, for me, yeah. Uh, well, let's, let's let's talk about Mitchell Stark, who got his, I think it was his 14th um, fiver, whatever that number means to you in your life. Um, he was fucking sensational, man. He was great last test match as well, really contributed um, to Australia. Winning that game, you, you, you always fear with, well, yeah, not not just in the basketball era on the in this series, uh, matching up with England, but just generally, like, you always feel with Stark, like, He's just like one bad spell away from being written off forever again. Because, you know, he goes for runs and uh, he's not Glenn McGrath and, um, um, or Nathan Bracken. So, um, but I, every time he does well, and he does well basically every single game, I just, I, I want to like push really hard for it. Because like he's just, he's continually the first drop, like in everyone's eyes. Like uh, I like the new guy in. Um, and he comes in, he's a great law order runs, that aside, but he, man, he, he always gets wickets. He always turns up, good fielder. Um, and he both fucking amazingly today. What did he finish here with? Five for 60-something, uh, five for 78. Um, and uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it's. Um, I guess my point is that I think he's good and he should get more praise more consistently. But uh, but he was um, he was really the only – I mean, Cunt Cummins is always a good good. He's, Cummins is always a good bowler. Wow, um, but uh, yeah, I, I also thought just um just on Boland as well. Like Boland hasn't had the impact that Australia were expecting in this series as well, right? And he's um he's appeared unders uh in in this game as well. Like he's just straying off a line, which I've not seen him bowl that way before in Australia. Anyway, long way of saying, gee, Stark was good. Thoughts? No, I don't know what else to add, <laughs> add to that. Really, yeah, he 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 kept Australia in it uh, single handedly, and it's. <clears throat> He, he, he was the only hope, you know. I mean, uh, Cummins was desperately trying to get through a couple of overs to give Stark enough rest to come back for one more push mm. at the end. Uh, but, but England were just batting too quickly. And unfortunately, yeah, you know, B- Boland couldn't tie that end down, uh, even in basball terms, you know, keep it to force if possible, could you, uh, Scotty? Yeah. But, um, yeah, they, they've knocked him off his leg. Oh, look, I, I think... Um, I think I think that's also credit to England's batters as well. I don't think Australia has seen stuff like this before. You know, I, I don't think fans have seen stuff like this before in Australia. Like we we, we all have this kind of like low level when, when when they bat. There's just this low level anxiety and stress. You you can't settle. I can't settle into my couch. I can't make a groove in my couch and just watch my boys go to work. Start working guys over. Start testing out yeah. their technique around the off bail. How precise can you be? Can I mix up your footwork with a bouncer? As soon as you you start doing that bang it's fucking none for 27 you know and there's been a few boundaries right. no, no balls getting left anymore and i think you know boland just played his career to guys who were willing to probably willing to let him dictate terms because he's so accurate but the england guys don't do that uh and th- they've uh you know they, they've caused him, him a challenge they've asked him to adapt and you know it, ter- it turns out Scott, Scotty B's metronomic, and then after that, it's di- it's difficult. It's it's tough going. Even Cummins today, Cummins Cummins' return, I think, was quite poor today. Really, I know I know yeah. he's always in with a shout, but uh, yeah, again, I just I just think that's also credit to England. They chase well. They have a great aura about it. Uh, they they you know made the deck look pretty flat. Uh, so uh, what you you have you have to you have to take the lick, baby. Indeed, just like uh, certain barbers um, not getting paid for haircuts. One of the fucking weirdest stories I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, <laughs> yeah, but target. you know, now that England has won, mate, that's a good story. You know, you're just rattled. Like, uh, England, England, England yeah. won the game of cricket with the bat and the ball, so you you, you got to you got to take that too. So mm. as opposed to take Indeed. the two, if you if you get a, got a penalty from the ref. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag ask TGC. Uh, Pez, this, this came in from Lister of Smeg on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Um, 
uh, yeah, um, who asked this question before the game started. And I want to ask it to you now. Uh, here, lads, appreciate your bants on the Bearstow incident. Would you prefer Headingley to be back to normal game scenes or an absolute cauldron of death with throws at the stumps once and over? Bounces at faces like a bukkake party on roids. Um, it does feel like uh, the Bearstow thing was in the late 90s now. That's how long ago it feels like. Um, but did, did we... Did we did we get enough uh, distance away from that instance now by having a great game of cricket, or did or would you like more sort of like dark art stuff? Where, where are you at with it? Um, do we, we get what we wanted this game? In in my life, mate, uh, like I'm increasingly coming to understand, and I haven't fully got there yet, but like that there's a season for everything, you know, like uh, mm. like you know sometimes you're just desperate to like have a full period of health where you're. You're just your body is a temple. You're perfect. You you judge smugly those who you know um, fill their body and their minds with garbage, um, while you go and um, you know sculpt yours. And then all of a sudden, you want to destroy thirty eight beers and everything that comes after it. You know that's yeah. that's what I mean by there. A season. There's a season for everything. Like I feel like this Ashes series has already been a long season of. Bukaki and bags, and yep. I I need a I need to set a settle like a settler, like for a test. Yep. Like I, I wouldn't mind a settler of just like a a, a bit of lilt, uh, you know what I mean? Mm. And I know I'm not going to get that with like ADD drug addled baseball, and yep. maybe that's good and the crowds come and stuff. But I'm just speaking personally. Like I wouldn't mind some some lilt. Like I wouldn't mind a bit of radio commentary where they can discuss, you know the um. You know the 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 fabulous looking tea lady woman with windswept hair. You know, like like, and mm. that, that's where Agnew and those guys come into their own. Like, there's no there's no time for that because because Duckett's walking at you, you know, and Crawley's driving you on the up, and yeah. now someone's done the done the dumbest shit ever, and Australia's just kind of standing there like fucking, <laughs> just like okay, we're just sort of part of this, and we're just gonna we're just gonna ride this ADD shit forever. Uh, Sorry, man. I'm, that, that, that's my answer for that. Like, so yeah, I, 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 I need. Yeah. A, like, I've got, I've got a red raw penis from all the bukkake. Uh I, I, uh, I just, I, I need my, my cock needs a break. You know, <laughs> we all know the feeling. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I've had, I've had three tests of just dry wanks now. Exactly. Uh, there's not, nothing coming what out. Do think, what, what do you think? Can I ask you? What do you? What do you? What do you want? You want bukkake? Mate, I, I no, no, no. I've, I've had, I've had enough. I need, I need, I need a new. Uh, I don't think I need a new extremity. Like I'm not chasing the dragon with it. Like I don't need a higher high. I'm not, I'm not going to be chasing that. I just need something like, um, like a stable relationship. You know, mm, um, mm, monogamy. Nice. Um, yeah. Just spooning, uh, like, like a, a cuddle. Yeah. Yeah, a, like a, like a, a video, a, a, a video with like a, a a nice backstory that start that goes for about sort of twenty five minutes. It's like an hour long video, but the mm. twenty five minutes you like you skip in and like they're still just talking, like setting up the scene. I, I, I like I like that bit. When you I say like video, do you um, do you mean like a VHS, like, or do you mean video? You're watching a video yeah. on your phone. Uh, like, no, I'm I'm talking about um yeah VHS yeah. um pornography film um. <laughs> Backstory, just one of those ones with the backstory. And, uh, and I and I and I've lost the remote, so I have to get up and like actually do it from the um the, the actual. Oh uh, mate, that's player. how I started my TV yeah. like uh, watching career at home. The, the remote didn't mm. even work. I've, I've I've been used to getting up and just doing it manually, and you can't it's, yeah. You, yeah you kind of get good at it and that. I mean, this is a strange way of dealing yeah. with Australia's loss, isn't it? A lot of people would tune, mm. would have tuned in for salty Australian tears. There's still two more tests. Yeah. They, you know they'll they'll come. They'll go come easy. <laughs> oh yeah, be patient. When, when England, well England are now uh, favourites to go three two fuck off mm. um, in one of the all time great turnarounds in the history of this tournament. Yeah. And I, I will keep referring to the Ashes as, as a tournament yeah. as, as a as a round robin. Oh, I got one more question. <laughs> it, it is like, yeah. is now that like Australia's lost another close one at Headingley? Like was that was. Headingly worse than Headingly, and what is Headingly anymore? Like, because for me, like, mm. like Headingly is still 2019. Like, that's one of the positives coming out of this yeah. close loss. Is like, like when we refer to Headingly, it's still going to be 2019. It's not going to be, oh yeah, when when Chris Wokes steadied the ship with Harry Brook yeah. and Mark Wood got them over the line. 
You know, yeah. like, uh, you know what I mean? No, or, or just like two, chaotic enough. Is just two losses at Headingley kind of now just merged all into one. It's like, oh, Headingley is where Australia loses. Take your pick how it gets done. Or is it, it's Headingley still just Nathan Lyon and Joel Wilson and and Salmons? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I think so. I, I'd be very surprised if um, someone uh, in the sheds um, uh, kicked over a bin uh, and then and then put everything back together, which is mm. still the highlight of the entire Ashes tournament history for me. Yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, man. I, I I don't know, but I just want some calm. We get we get nine days. Is that, is that what it is between yeah. uh, nine ten days between uh, this one and uh, and the old Trafford Test match? So I don't know. Um, I guess England are our favourites to win every game forever because I've never seen them lose. I can't remember Australia ever winning a game. How's Australia going to get another wicket? That's a, like I don't I don't know how there's another wicket for Australia available. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Um, Cameron Green has to go home now. Um, I don't want to see him near the team. Uh, and uh, what's Jai Richardson doing? Can we make sweeping changes? Is is Marnus really the option at number three? You know, do you, do you want? What do you, what do you want? Selection wise, like, do you, do you want sweeping? Nah, no. I know they'll they'll just they'll just they'll just play Hazelwood instead of Bowles. They'll play the, the like the bowlers will be the bowlers. So Marsh retains um, his spot. Um, probably, hmm. probably. I don't think you can drop a guy after a score of hundred. I just there. I said it. I just agree. Reckon? Yeah, no, I agree. And then Warner, I'm like, nah. I I, I think they reward the it's team fine. for the first two tests. I think Warner played especially well at Lords, you know, to win that game. Um, but that doesn't mean there won't be heaps of people who think differently. And maybe that's fair enough. You know, num- numbers numbers aren't stacking up great. And uh, he, yeah. you know, he's pull, he's he's on the, his characters been on the nose with many Australians for a long time. So um, you know, mm. that's a pretty heady cocktail for uh, a bit of media chat but i just think like mm. they'll, they'll they'll give him another crack um do you think that england will I, do something with bear and folks and shit it's hard one now because like they've just won the game so like teams often like just get rewarded for winning the game like if they've won they've won with a, a, a fourth grader yeah keeping for them I mean, it's it's it strikes me as just being fucking insane that he's still the wicket keeper i mean i i don't i've never seen him keep this badly before um like it's it's not even county level, which which as we know is third grade. Uh, yeah. It's it's it, you just have to you just have to think if you keep picking him, that like it's just going to keep costing them as it did in the first two test matches. But but I get the feeling like they'll just pick him and they'll figure it out. I, I can't see how folks gets in. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's like he's he's like a he's like a spirit animal for them or something now. Mm. Like uh, even yeah. even yeah, the, the the batting seems to have gone to shit as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, uh, there's some preamble for the fourth test match starting in a few days' time. Main podcast out this week, of course. Uh, and we'll see you guys on the internet real soon. Cheers.